Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll learn about uh, for loops or for statements. So let's get started. So in Python, a for loop is used to, uh, you know, iterate over a sequence. We've seen list, we've seen tuples, we've seen dictionaries, we've seen sets, even uh, strings. So you typically use for loop to uh, execute a um, a set of statements um, once, once for each uh, item within, you know, within that list, within that tuple, etc. So it's basically used to access elements within a sequence, if that makes sense. So let's say, for example, uh, we have a, um, you know, like a, a whatever, like uh, you want to print different letters within a uh, string. So for x in, this is a syntax. So for every element within, um, let's say, uh, welcome, it's just a, um, you know, like a string. I want to print, uh, I want to print x. So if we run that, what that does is it's going to print every single element within this particular string. So it's a little different uh, compared to other programming languages. So this is more over a sequence. Um, so here, it, what it means is like for x element within this particular string, I want to print the elements, okay? So let's see more examples here. Uh, let's say we have uh, a as a list, as we've seen. And uh, we have numbers, uh, strings, welcome, um, Python, etc. So I want to access each of these elements using for loop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say for x. It doesn't have to always be x, but you know you can use anything. Let's say for y in a. In this case, the list is called A, right? Okay, print, print Y. So if you run that, it's gonna print every single element within that particular list. So that's pretty much the syntax and how you how you apply it. And as we've seen with, uh, with while loop, uh, with the break statement, you can also use break statement within, uh, you know, for, for loops. So if, for example, um, I want to skip, uh, you know, I want to skip welcome. I can say if y is equal, if the element y is in this case welcome, for example, then break. Um, I forgot the comma. Yeah, so break. When you use the break statement, it's going to stop the loop. Oh, it's going to stop the loop before it continues, if that makes sense. So once it hits the breaking point, it's just going to stop the loop. So the whole loop here is supposed to be all the way to, you know, 5, 8, welcome in Python. But if you put a break here after welcome, um, it's going to stop the loop before it even goes, you know, goes through the entire, the entire loop here. And continue, on the other hand, um, if you use continue, for example, uh, I'm going to print here. So for y in a, if y is welcome, continue, and I want to print, I want to print y. So let's see what this does. Okay, so um, don't get confused with you know break versus continue. So continue, what it does is it's gonna it's gonna stop the current iteration of the loop, uh, and then continue with the next. We've seen that with the you know with the while loop. So you can go ahead and watch that video as well. So what it does is so for every element in A five eight welcome Python, those are the elements within that list, and you can use sets, you can use whatever. So if Y is welcome, continue. So it's going to print 5, 8, and it's going to hit welcome. It's going to skip that, you know, and continue with the next 
element. So that's really what the difference between continue and break statement is. I think we can even uh, discuss the range function because we use range function a lot with for loops. So uh, the range function, what that does is um, it just returns a sequence of numbers. You know how you see here accessing a particular list? So uh, with range, you, you know, it returns a sequence of numbers. It'll start from zero and then you keep going. One is going to increment one and then, you know, it's going to end um, at a specified number. So what I'm saying is, for example, use four x in range. This is the function, um, you know, range function in, uh, let's say, range 10. Same syntaxing. Print x, for example. So same thing as we've used here uh, in a list or a set or a tuple, or whatever. In the range function, if I run this, it's going to start at zero by default. That's where it starts. And it's going to keep incrementing for, you know, within this range all the way to 10. But it's not going to include 10. So because why? Because this is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so it's going to start at 0. So the number here is going to be skipped. It's not going to be including, included in, in um, you know, the function because it starts at 0. So remember that. So um, we can use another example here for range function. So if I say range between um, 4 to 15, maybe, print x. Oop. I forgot the, okay, there we go, uh, syntax. So, so this is going to print, uh, you know, the values from 4 to 15, but because it starts at 0 as a starting value, is not going to include um, 15. That's why it's going to increment all the way to 14, just like we've seen earlier with, um, you know, the previous example. So that's kind of uh, how the range function uh, works. And remember when I said uh, that the default, you know, you start counting uh, from 0 and you increment by 1. But if you want to increment more than 1, you actually... Uh, you can put that here. So this will say start from 4 to 15 and increment by 2. So if I run this, it's going to start at 4, no longer defaulting to 1 because I'm using here the increment 2. So it's going to say 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 8, you know, I mean plus 2 is 8, 10, 12, 14, and still not including 15 at all, right? So you can kind of play with that with the range function. Uh, and the for loop. And again, like we've seen with while loops um, and if uh, statements as well, you can use um, in addition to break statement, continuous statement, you can also use else uh, statement. So, um, and again, with, with else, uh, it's going to, uh, uh, you know, specify, it's going to print the uh, whatever code you include underneath the else statement. When the loop is finished. So um, if I have an else statement here, I say, um, you know, this is my line of code to say uh, I'm done, you know, with this for loop, for example. So if I run this, once you're complete with this loop right here, uh, then the else statement will come and it's going to print that out, just like, you know, what we've seen with while loops and what we've seen with, uh, you know, with, with if statements as well. It's the same, same concept. However, if you, uh, if you use a break statement, um, it's not, um, you know, the else statement, it will not be, will not be uh, printed at all. It would not be executed. So that's something to put in mind, to keep in mind as well. Uh, so let's say I put here, you know, for x, uh, whatever here, I have, uh, for example, if uh, x is equal to, let's say, 10, 
Uh, I, I include a break a statement there and I print X. Let's see what happens. So this statement right here will not be executed at all because you have um, the, the the loop is uh, you know it's stopped stopped by the break statement as well as well. So it's not always going to be printed uh, just because you're exiting out of the loop. So if you have a break statement, it's not going to be printed. It's not going to be um, executed. So something to keep in mind there as well. So a few more examples here. So with for loops as well, you can have um, nested loops. Uh, a nested loop is a loop inside of a loop. So, um, you know, let's say we have a, um, uh, let's put a list here, let's say eight, nine. I'm just gonna use numbers this time around to make it easy. And just keep it simple as well. Um, B equals um, five, four, just three. And, say for x in in a that's my first loop and then I, I want to say for y in b okay I want to say print x y so this is a nested loop so you have a, a for loop right within a for loop here so if I print that so for every element um, in, in A, uh, it's going to print with every element also within B. So that's why you see here 8, 5, you know, 8, 5, um, you know, 8, 4, 8, 3, keep going with the loop, you know, 9, 5, uh, 9, 4, et cetera. Um, you know, 9, 3, and then start with 19 as well. So this is basically saying for every element in A, include an element with B, okay? So print each A for every B, if that makes sense. So for every A, so each A, print each A for every B, for every element in B. Yes, so that's this is what they call a uh, a nested loop, and you can keep going with this as well with with more practice. So let's see here what else um, I want to mention as far as for statements. Oh, so past statements. So past statement. Um, so for loops can't be uh, they can't be empty, but if you have a for loop, for example, with no content at all you have to put the past statement in order to uh, avoid getting any error error message. So for example, if we have for x, just like we've seen um, in range, uh, let's say eight. So I just wanna keep it empty. I just put a pass. So if I do that, it's just gonna be empty. But if I don't, I'm gonna get an error, um, right? Uh, because it says, uh, that you know there's no content for this particular for loop okay so if you want to just for whatever reason the for loop doesn't have any content you just put a pass in there and then in that case is you know you're going to avoid avoid um you know getting an error error message so i think that's about it so just keep playing with it uh so Basically, just to kind of reiterate what we've said for for loops. So for loops is used typically to access elements within a sequence. And we've seen those sequences. You know, we've seen lists, we've seen tuples, we've seen um, uh, sets, dictionaries, etc. So uh, this is typically uh, how, you, how you use it in Python. So uh, we've also talked about the range function as well. Um, and then, you know, different statements within for loop that you can use for, you know, with for loops. So... Let me know if you have any comments or if you have any questions as well. Thank you.